Hi, macro students. Miss Griffith going over topic 5.7, public policy and economic growth. Again, somewhat of a review. In 5.6, you did see this aggregate production function. What happens on this graph when there is an improvement in education and human capital? Well, that means that productivity is going to increase, okay? So at the same physical capital per worker, when we are more educated um, and we know more, we are able to produce more. So the real GDP per worker increases at the same amount of physical capital per worker. All right. Okay. What government policies most likely result in long-run economic growth? Meaning that the long-run aggregate supply can increase, or the PPC, right, also would increase to points that they were not able to reach before. All right, well, there are a few things. First, education and training spending. Well, this increases human capital, and we are able to be more productive. And when we're more productive, we can produce more. All right. Infrastructure spending, public works like roads, bridges, and harbors. Well, this increases physical capital, which does result in long-term economic growth. And then also production and investment incentive programs. So this is super important that this also increases physical capital. And this is for businesses that we've been talking about. Maybe a new assembly line, new machines, new tools, all right? Well, how does the government promote this especially is what we're really going to be looking at. Well, they give investment tax credits. An investment tax credit is just a federal tax incentive for business investment. They want businesses to invest in machinery that is going to make them more productive. All right. When the government does do this, this is called supply side policies. And that makes sense because they are trying to affect the amount of production, right, by increasing it. Um, some examples of supply-side policies are reducing the tax rates, more flexible labor markets, investment in education and training, and deregulation. So here's an example for deregulation. Say there is a company who makes tires, okay? They need rubber to make these tires, but they also are regulated to have rubber mats down on the ground, okay, to prevent slipping and things like that. So what if the government deregulates that regulation, saying they do not need those rubber mats anymore? Well, now they're going to have all the rubber that they need to produce more tires, okay? This will increase the supply of tires. So these are just some things that governments offer businesses in order to promote long-term growth, all right? So they can maybe become more productive, all right, increasing the aggregate supply, all right? So supply-side fiscal policies. Again, the government is stepping in, giving some sort of incentive to businesses, all right? Government policies designed to increase production by reducing business taxes and or regulations. So the main ones here are um, reduced tax rates and deregulation. Well, why might this be controversial? Well, providing tax breaks to businesses might be disproportionately benefit um, to the wealthy, all right? Disproportionately benef 
beneficial to the wealthy. All right. It assumes that corporations will spend their tax cuts on investments rather than pay out shareholders or use the money elsewhere. So that is why these could be controversial. You have seen this graph the aggregate demand, aggregate supply graph next to the PPC in the last lecture, all right? What I need you to remember that is only an increase in investment can eventually shift the long run aggregate supply to the right in the long run, okay? So what happens um, in the long run if government decreases corporate taxes? All right, well, let's take it step by step. If the government decreases corporate taxes, the aggregate demand is going to increase because investment increases. Remember, investment is a determinant of aggregate demand. Investment increases due to the lower tax rates. Okay, well, when investment increases, capital stock increases, allowing more stuff to be produced because of better productivity. Well, what's gonna happen here is that the aggregate supply, now that we can produce more, is going to increase to the right. Well, when the aggregate demand and aggregate supply increase to the right, this is the only time that long run aggregate supply will increase, all right? The way that that looks like on the PPC is it's just shifted out, all right? So again, though, this aggregate demand had to be because investment increased in order for the long run aggregate supply to increase. All right, let's see what happens if it wasn't investment that increased. All right, well, let's say um, that the government is going to increase social services. So aggregate demand is still gonna shift to the right uh, because government spending has increased, and government spending is a determinant of aggregate demand. Well, that's going to cause an inflationary gap, all right? Aggregate supply will decrease as wages increase, bringing the, gov or bringing the economy back to the original long-run aggregate supply at a higher price level. All right, so it started out the same. Aggregate demand increased, but it increased because of government spending. Well, that is not going to cause long-run economic growth. What caused long-run economic growth was investment, okay, in capital stock and being more productive, all right? That is what is going to push the PPC out and it's going to push the long run aggregate supply to the right.